Hey, what's up? This is Justin with Lesser Dog Tutorials, and welcome to video two in the Retro FPS tutorial series. So this episode is mainly going to be focused on adding a weapon to the player. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is import the textures for the weapon animation and the crosshair into our weapons folder within the textures folder. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm importing the temp pistol, bullet hole, and crosshair, and all of these will need to be um, converted with, to this um, paper 2D texture settings. And then I can right click the temp pistol, and I'm going to extract the sprites. And instead of auto, I'll do grid. And for the width, I'll do 160. And that should divide them up into equal sprites. Now, with these imported and separated into sprites, I can select the first one and I'll create a flipbook. And I'll just call this FB for flipbook underscore pistol idle. And then for the last three here, I'll create another flipbook called FB underscore pistol fire. And then if we were to take these, we can actually move these to another folder that we'll just create here called flipbooks. And then back in the weapons folder for the textures, we we'll take both of these flipbooks and we'll just move them into the flipbooks folder. And for firing the gun, it looks like it's a little too fast. If we switch it to something like 10, maybe even six, We'll try eight for now. Save that. And then if you open the idle, or you could even open the other one, we want to see this masked unlit sprite material. We want to find this. So if we browse, we can find that right here. And it is based off of the default sprite material. So we can actually go back up to where our folders are and we'll drag that into our materials. And instead of move here, we'll do copy here. So now we have a copied version of the default sprite material. And we'll open that up and we're gonna make a couple edits in here. The first one is that we want to change the blend mode to translucent instead of masked. And then we're going to remove these. And for multiply, we're gonna change that from one to 0.25, and then we're going to move the opacity, the alpha into the opacity. For um, the shading model, we change it from unlit to default lit, and this is because we want lights to actually affect this. Secondly, we want the RGB not to go to emissive, but we want that to go to the base color, and we can actually remove the emissive color by holding Alt, and that is what we're looking for. We're looking for something that's dark, because it will be lit by lights um, near the character and near the weapon. So with that done, we can save it and close it because now we can assign this material to the flipbooks. So let's just rename this while we're at it to M underscore FPS Sprite. And then we'll go to our flipbooks and we'll assign each one um, to this new material. So we can actually hide the engine content so we don't need to see all that jazz. There we go, that looks good. And then, oops, I don't think I saved it. Make sure it's saved. And then the idle, again, FPS sprite, save. Next, we'll do a little bit of a trick to get the gun to be pixel perfect in front of the player. And so the tactic I'll be using is something called a render target. So in the textures here, I'm just gonna create a render target if I can find it. Materials and textures. And I think I want the canvas render target. So I'm gonna call this CRT for canvas render target and just weapon for now. And if I open that up, then what I want to do in here is change the size to be 16.9, but a really small version of that, so it can scale, but still be um, 
I still have that low resolution. So I'll do 426 by 240. And then I want to change the texture group to be 2D pixels unfiltered because it needs to be very crisp. So with that done, we don't really need to do anything else in here. But what we do need to do is create a material based on this that we will just call M underscore CRT underscore weapon. And for this material, we want to change the material domain to be user interface. And we want the blend mode to be translucent. And then if we hook that up here, we also want to take the alpha and put that into the opacity. However, we need to inverse it. So we'll do one minus, and then plug that into the opacity. And now it should be what we need it to be. So with that done, the next thing we didn't need to do is create a HUD where this weapon will be displayed. So if we go to the blueprints, we can just create one in this folder here, and we will go to user interface, widget blueprint. We'll call that WBP underscore HUD. And then if we open that up, the first thing we'll do is create or replace the canvas panel with a, an overlay. And then this overlay will have a couple of things. Um, firstly, it will have an image. And that image is going to be the weapon. And then the weapon can be um, stretched all the way across the screen because it's still going to be a 16.9 resolution. We just have to plug the weapon into this spot. So what we need to do is go into the brush section of appearance, and for the image, we just select our material that we just made, which is the render target material. And then I want to add another image on the overlay, which will be centered completely, and this will be our crosshair. But the size is a little small, so we're gonna change the size to 44 by 44, which is just four times larger than what it originally is. So if we just go to our player, then what we want to do on begin play is add that HUD. So we'll do the begin play event, and then we will create a widget, and it will be our HUD widget. And then we can add to viewport, which should be all we need. If we hit play, you'll see the crosshair right there in the middle of the screen, ready to go. It appears to be warped because we need to set the play to enter the uh, new editor window here. And then it should be now 16.9 and looking good. Next, we're going to create the blueprint that is going to be the base class for all of our weapons. And it's going to be an actor. So let's just create a blueprint class of the type actor. And we'll name it BP underscore player weapon base. And this is going to be an actor that we attach to our player. And it will be the base actor for all of the weapons that we'll be using. So this will hold, um, you know, the, the pixel art for the weapon and the effects and things like that that the weapon will do so that we can change it to whatever we want instead of just forcing it onto some sort of um, hierarchy that we create in the player, which can get pretty confusing. So all we need to do in the player is just add a child actor that will be under the camera and we'll just call that weapon and then this will be what we use to select the child actor class that will be based off of this weapon base so let's set up what the player weapon base will be that we can use to derive all the weapons in the game from so the first thing i want to do is i'll create a scene capture component 2D, which is going to be the camera that will be rendering in the orthographic projection so we can do pixel perfect weapons. 
So we'll just create this, and this will be our camera. And we'll switch that to orthographic, and we'll do an ortho width of 426, because that is the pixel width, if you recall, of our canvas render target. So the orthographic width is the same as the X width, which is 426. So with that done, we want to add a flipbook. So we'll just add that flipbook underneath the scene capture. And this will be called weapon flipbook, just to help us understand what it does. And for the position, we're going to want it to be negative 90 on the Z rotation, so it, it's facing the camera. And, you know, we can just add that source flipbook, so we'll just do the idle flipbook, so you can kind of see how that's going to look. And actually, that looks like it might be the wrong direction. Yeah, let's do 90 for that. And then we'll move the location on the Z to negative 50, and then 100, oops, not 200, 100 on the Y. So this will be picked up by this scene capture component, and it will, we'll, we'll set it up so it only sees this stuff here. You know, it won't see anything else in the game, and we can set that up in the actual blueprints. But the first thing we want to do before we forget is we're going to change the collision for this weapon um, to no collision. So if, we, if you search for the collision area, we can say collision presets, no collision. So we're not gonna, it's not going to bump into anything or uh, screw anything up in the game. And then let's see the... Um, Next thing we want to add, I think, is a point light. And that can be attached to the scene capture component. And then be sure to redo the transform location in case that screws up. But this is just going to be like the light that we illuminate the world around us when we fire the weapon. And it's more kind of a test, or it's just there kind of to see how it works. I, I don't really know if this is the best way to do it yet. But as of right now, it's just for our own purposes for testing. So for the location on the X, we'll set it to 38. And then for the intensity, we're going to double that from 5,000 to 10,000. And then the attenuation radius. We want that to be probably 800. And then we can set this to be hidden in the game so that we can turn this on whenever we need it. So with that done, we could try to see if it'll work if we test it out. So let's go ahead and choose the actor class to be equal to a weapon base. And then you can see now a bunch of stuff pops up, but we want to make sure that the scene capture doesn't doesn't get anything other than just the weapon so if we go over to um, the event graph right on the begin play we can find show only component using the scene capture uh, component 2d and what's cool about this is that we can just say specifically what we want to see and it, we can just say you know what only show me the weapon flipbook. That's it. And then the only other thing that we need to do is if you select the scene capture 2D, you can go down to scene capture and you'll see that texture target. And this is where the camera will render to this canvas render target that we made before. And then if you were to compile and save and test it out, you'll see that the gun is on the actual player itself as we walk around. And what's cool about this is that if we if we just added a point light just kind of in the middle, then you can see that the light affects your hand, which is really, really cool. So now we can really feel immersed. All we have to do is animate how the hand moves when you walk. 
and then actually fire weapons or fire bullets. So with that out of the way, now I want to kind of do a few more things that will help facilitate the switching of weapons and getting new weapons later. So I'm just going to right click in the blueprints folder and we're going to add a blueprint interface and I will call this I player weapon. And all this is going to do is have a single function, at least for now, that we'll just call initialize weapon. And then we can compile and save and close that out. And then in the player weapon base, we'll want to use this interface. So we'll implement this. It's called I player weapon. And then when that is implemented in the event graph, we can actually implement that event. And what this event is going to do, if this is the base, if we are equipping the base, then we're going to not have a weapon visible at all. So all we need to do is get this weapon flipbook, set the flipbook to be equal to nothing, and then we are going to set hidden in game and make sure this is ticked so it is going to actually be hidden. All right. Now with that done, we can head over to the player. And we need to just create um, some things in here. So the first thing we'll do is create a variable and it will be called current weapon. And the type is going to be the weapon base the BP player weapon base, but we're not doing an object, we're doing a class reference because it will be um, any type of class inheriting from the player weapon base. And with this selected, we can add it to a category. We'll just call it player. And we'll use this as our way of equipping weapons as opposed to actually adding the class in here so we can we can remove this we'll clear that child actor class and we really shouldn't ever mess with this we'll let it kind of figure itself out based on what we assign into the current weapon slot so i'm just going to do the player weapon base and leave it at that because this will only only change in the actual blueprints during the game but it should never change unless you're testing it should never change here. So let's add a custom event that we'll call equip weapon. And what this is going to do is pass in the weapon base class, right? Class reference. And we'll just say weapon. And the first thing it will do is set the current weapon to be equal to what we pass in. And then it will set the child actor class of this weapon. So set child actor class. And then we just pass in the class to set there. And then next we want to check if this weapon, well, first we'll get the child actor. So whatever actor is now assigned, which is going to be a weapon. And then we'll just check if it implements the interface that we just made does does implement interface and we choose the i player weapon the one we just made we'll branch from that to check oops and if it is true that means we're going to run the initialize weapon right so every time we equip a weapon it will run the initialize weapon. And if you recall on the weapon base, we clear the flip book and we set it hidden. So if we run that on begin play, equip weapon, and in our case, we're not gonna pass anything in. We're just gonna select the weapon base and it's just going to run the standard Um, initialize weapon so it's going to set it to nothing which is what we want because if we start with no weapon we shouldn't see any weapon let's give it a shot and see if it works 
All right, so now we have no weapon equipped, and it should equip based on when we decide to give a weapon, like, for instance, if you run over a weapon pickup. So let's make that and see how it works. So now let's go ahead and right click the player weapon base and we'll create a child blueprint class. And instead of player weapon base, we will call it BP underscore pistol. And if you open that up, we can make some changes in here. So what we want to do is we will delete everything in here. We don't need this. So we can right click and implement that initialize weapon event. And so really we're just going to be assigning visual elements. So basically just the weapon flipbook. So let's create a variable that will be called idle flipbook of the type paper flipbook. And then we can duplicate this and just call it fire pistol. So we can actually just rename idle flipbook to be idle pistol. All right. So if we compile, we can just assign these. So this is the idle, so I'll use that. And this is the fire, and I'll use that. So the, in, the initial thing that we're doing here is we're just setting the sprite on the flipbook. Or I, I should say we're setting the flipbook to be equal to the idle pistol. And then we are making it not hidden. So set actor, sorry, hidden, set hidden in game, and it is not hidden. So keep that false. This is just the basic idea of when this is picked up, we're going to initialize the weapon and set the pistol to the footbook and make sure that it is visible because in the player weapon base, we make sure at the beginning it's not visible. So let's just now create the pickup. So we'll just create another actor and we'll call it BP weapon pickup. And the weapon pickup is just going to have no begin play, but it is going to have begin overlap and tick. For the begin overlap, we actually want to add a sphere collider or sphere collision. Pick up radius, we'll call it pick up radius. And that will be, I think 50 is a good sphere radius for that. But we also want to add a paper flipbook also. So this will be the weapon to pick up. So in the viewport, you know, we don't have that weapon. So we can just actually import that. It should be also a part of your assets in the description, import it. And then we just need to do the paper 2D settings. And now we have that ready to go. And then back in the weapon pickup, that's where we will add the weapon. We don't need to do it in here, but um, we actually need to make a foot book out of it. So we'll just create a foot book by creating a sprite first and then creating that foot book. So it'll just be called pistol pickup, but we can, we can start it off with the FB underscore pistol pickup. And then we'll just move that to our foot books folder for now. And then in the weapon pickup, we can use this as our basis for um, weapon pickups. And so if we were to drag that into the world, you know, you can see it's there. It's just a little small and also a little off center. So if we change the location, oh, we actually want that to be under the scene root. And then we'll change the Z location to be 28, which will move it up. And we can even change the scale to be a little bigger. And then, yeah, that looks a little, a little better, a little easier to see. Okay, so with that done, we can actually figure out the logic to do this. So 
from other actor we're going to cast to the player FPS player because from the player we're going to equip the weapon and the weapon to equip will create a variable for that so we'll call it weapon to acquire which would be a, of the type player weapon base but we want it to be the class so make sure that it is not an object reference but a class reference and then we can actually move this to a category that we'll just call weapon pickup and then we'll use that to say what weapon we're equipping and this is just kind of temporary this stuff will change later and then we can destroy this actor then for tick this is mainly just because we want to face the player at all times which is what we'll be doing for enemies later so the first thing we want to do is get the player camera manager and then from that we're going to get the camera location and then from this we're going to get the world location and then we want to do find look at rotation so it's starting at the world location of the weapon and its target is the camera and then we're going to split the return value because all we need is z and we'll subtract 90 so that it turns to face the player otherwise it, you'll just see the side of it and then all we're doing is setting the world rotation for the weapon and then if you split that struct then we can hook up z to, to that so it's the z rotation is all that's really spinning and then now we have the pickup we can equip a weapon based on what we assign and in order to see what we're going to assign we need to select this eyeball here next to weapon to acquire to make it public so we can see it in the editor and then you can see it on the side here and we'll just select the pistol let's test it out and see if it works got no weapon at the beginning there's the gun run over it and now we have the pistol equipped which is great so now we have a method for equipping the pistol why don't we add some polish and make the pistol move around when we walk let's open up the player weapon base and we're going to try to animate the gun based on the player's movement so if we select the weapon flipbook and then we hit add we can look for an actor sequence and if we add this we can call this weapon bob now you'll see there is a warning it uses it's an experimental class this actor sequence component it's new they're still working out the bugs and kinks so this may or may not continue to work as unreal engine is updated so keep that in mind but what we'll do is in this sequence drop down here we're going to select open in tab so that here at the bottom we can see a little timeline where we can animate some stuff so what I want to do is change the frames per second to be 15 instead of 30 so in order to actually animate anything I'm going to select this plus track section and we're going to add the weapon flipbook and the weapon flipbook will be the thing that we we animate but specifically that what we're wanting to animate is its location so if we go to the very top you can select transform and then drop it down and here the locations can be set we will add a key on the y and the z right at the beginning and if we were to go to 1.333 or maybe another three just for fun this will be where the actual sorry 1.3333 that's where it's, it's going to end the timeline will end so we'll just drag this all the way to be there and we can at 0.3333 we're going to add another keyframe for each of these however for y we're going to choose 90 and for z we'll leave it at negative 50 and then we will move it up to be 0.6667 
and we will add a keyframe for Y to be 100, and again, Z, we'll just add another keyframe here. And then we'll go up to 1, and we'll go 10 over, so we'll do, instead of 100, we'll do 110, and again, leave Z at negative 50, but we'll add a keyframe there. And then we want to reset it, so here we'll do 100, and another keyframe for Z at negative 50. So now it's going to go back and forth like this, but what we want to do is over here on the sequencer curves, we can actually select each of these, and you can see these things are changed a little bit. In order for this to really be smoothed out a little more, we can select each side and just kind of angle it down so that this little arm sticks straight down the line. Same for the other side, we can go straight up the line. And then for this middle part, we also can kind of change it so that it's a little more curvy. You can see that it kind of curves a little better there. And then on the Z, we just kind of want to bend it up a little bit. You know, nothing too drastic. Just kind of make the flow a little better. And if you sh if it show if you look at it, you can see it kind of bounces back and forth in a kind of a cool way. So let's leave it at that for now. You know, you just kind of make it curvy in, in this way. And then I think that'll that'll do it for the animation of the bob. Now we just have to figure out how it is triggered. So I think what we'll do is add in the weapon base, we'll add a custom event. We'll call this weapon bob or weapon bobbing. I guess it won't let you name it the same as um, a component. So we'll add two inputs. The first one will be a bool called is moving, and the second one will be a float called delta time. And the first thing we'll do is branch from this bool to see whether or not we are moving, which will tell us if we should um, bob the weapon. So if you drag in weapon bob, this um, actor sequence component, from it we can get the sequence player and then we will play. We'll just run the play command right there, and that's if it's true. And if it's false, we will stop. Not stop, but stop. Pretty simple, um, but we also want to have it be a smooth transition. So what we'll do is we'll get that footbook for the weapon, and we will get its relative location. Uh, that was weird. And then from this, we will v interp two. So we're interpolating a vector using delta time, so the delta time is the one we're passing in. And then all we're doing is setting the relative location of the footbook, and that will be set to be equal to the return value of this interpolation. And this only happens after we stop it. And so it's basically just rem it's just moving this weapon back to its idle position smoothly so it's not so jarring. Cool. Now we just need to run this since it's going to be on the player base. If we go to the player, we can add 
our tick function back in. And all we're going to do is get that weapon and then get its child actor. And then we'll cast to the player weapon base so that we have it. And then from this, we will do the weapon bob. And we'll pass in the delta seconds to be the delta time. And really, to find out is moving, we'll just need to get the character movement. And then from that, we'll get the velocity. Should be at the bottom, get velocity. And then we will get the vector length. And all we're doing is seeing if it's greater than zero, which will mean we're moving. So with that done, we can give it a shot and see if it does actually we um, bob the weapon. So we don't have any weapon right now, but if we pick one up, it looks like it's working. But for some reason, when it stops, it moves to the middle of the screen. So that's definitely not what we want. Let's figure that out. So the new location that we're setting it to, the target is at 0, 0, 0. So we could just make a variable called weapon position, make that a vector. And then we can use that to tell us where the target is. And then on begin play, we can set this to be equal to the flipbooks relative location. And now we should have everything we need to make this thing work. So now there's no weapon currently visible until we walk over the pistol. And now you can see that we have our gun moving when we walk. It does snap, which it should not do. Let's figure out why that is. Because we should be interpolating to this position. Oh, the interp speed probably should be set to something instead of zero. Otherwise, it'll just snap. So we'll give that a shot now. And there's our gun, pick it up. There we go. Now let's make one final thing, and that'll be an animation for drawing the weapon when we run over the weapon pickup. So in the player weapon base, we're just going to add another actor sequence component. And we'll call this weapon draw. And if we were to open that up in its own tab, we can then do the same thing we did before, where we get that weapon flipbook, and then we track the transform, and specifically the Z location. So we start off at negative 50. So we'll just like move it out a bit, maybe at about 0.5. We could even shrink the entire timeline down. And then at 0.5, we can add our keyframe where this gun will be. And then back at zero, we can just rem we can just move it way down so that's out of the shot of the camera. Now head over to the player's blueprint and go to the end of equip weapon. And if we pull out from this child actor node here, we'll need to cast it to the weapon base. And once that's done, we can get from the weapon base, we can get the weapon draw. And then we'll get the sequence player from that. And all we have to do is hit play. And then it plays the animation of drawing the weapon. So we'll compile and save that and test it out. So there's the weapon, and if I run over it, he pulls that weapon right up. There we go. So I think we're, we're done with what we're going to be doing in this section for the weapon. Firing the weapon will come later. 
but first we will need to tackle the ability system that is already a part of Unreal and will require a little bit of C++ to get started. So get your coding um, boots on and your C++ gloves also on for the next video because you will need to be dressed up real snug for what's to come. All right. So if you like the video, please hit like. If you want to subscribe, then do that. I'm not going to stop you. And I'll see you in the next one.